So guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, we are looking at the much anticipated and I bet soon to be widely loved Hoka Mark 6. There's only one sticking point. They've made a few changes over the Hoka Mark 5 that have made it a different shoe. Maybe that's a stretch, but in a lot of ways it's true. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, let's get started off with those disclosures. Mark 6 was sent to me by Hoka for the purpose of review. However, they haven't told me what to say. They've got no editorial privileges and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. With that said, the Hoka Mark 6 will cost you $140. And of course, I will place a link to it in the show notes below in case you wanna pick up a pair for yourself. That's a pretty good price, right? I mean, I know our perception is skewed because the cost of running shoes are just going up and up and up. But still, at this point in time, $140 seems like a good deal for this type of shoe. Well, what type of shoe is the Hoka Mark 6? Like what type of runs are you going to do in it. Well, I think by design, this is this is a lightweight, up-tempo shoe. So not for your easy runs, maybe your faster runs, maybe your tempo efforts. But ultimately, I think this shoe falls more into a lightweight daily trainer category that is also remarkably well suited for picking up the pace. And I say lightweight daily trainer, and it is pretty lightweight. Hoka claims that a US men's size 9 would hit the scale at 8.2 ounces or 232 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, it tips the scale at 9.9 .9 ounces or 282 grams. And my friends, that is remarkably light for a daily trainer in my size. Now as far as stack height goes, in the men's version we have 37 in the heel, 32 in the forefoot, and in the women's version we have 35 in the heel, 30 in the forefoot, both for a 5mm drop. So let's start at the top and work our way down. We have a nice padded heel collar. Now it's not overly padded, but there is more than enough padding here to get the job done. The heel counter is extremely rigid. Not only is it rigid right at the back, but it extends down the side. And that is going to contribute to a very nice heel lockdown. I didn't experience any heel slip, and with a heel counter of this rigidity, I'd be surprised if anyone does. The Mark 6 has a Creole Jacquard upper. It's fairly breathable. I've got no complaints with that. It's actually quite lightweight and the overlays are fairly minimal. We have a little bit of the back. There's an underlay coming around the toe box, a little bit of reinforcement coming along the eyelid chain, and of course just the branding, the logo there on the lateral side and on the medial side. The Mark 6 does have that extra eyelet in case you want to do the runner's knot. However, that wasn't necessary for me. I didn't have to use that. I got a good lockdown without making those lace loops. Now let's talk about the tongue. And this is what I guess separates a lightweight daily drainer like the Mark 6 from a regular daily drainer. The tongue is super thin. It's almost like a race day tongue. It's extremely breathable. When I look in the shoe, I can see the light peeking through the light mesh down here. We have a lace loop right on the front and the tongue is gusseted on both sides. So this tongue isn't going anywhere. The only thing that I would say is that because the tongue is so thin, sometimes when I put my foot in, I did find the edge of the tongue kind of folding over just a little bit. Really no big deal. I was able to just kind of stick my finger in and make it flat, but that's what we get for having such a thin tongue. There is a little bit of padding. It's difficult for you to see right here, but there is a Hoka logo right here on the tongue that has a little bit of extra padding in it, and that's just stopping the laces from biting into the top of your foot when you cinch it down. Speaking of cinching, when I locked down the Mark 6, I got a good midfoot lockdown, really had no issues there. When I tied the shoe down, everything stayed in place. Okay, let me hold up the shoe. Can you see that? That profile is quite narrow. And guys, I gotta tell you, I've got narrow feet and this struck me as a narrow shoe. Now, it wasn't too narrow for me. In fact, I would say that this shoe is made for my type of foot. It fit my foot very well. But if you have wider feet, the Mark 6 may not be for you. Now, I don't know if the Mark 6 is available in wide sizes, but the regular size is quite narrow. But if you've got narrow feet like me, the shoe's gonna fit like a dream. Now, let's come down to the midsole. This is where Hoka has made a pretty big change. They have changed from Pro 5 Plus in the Mark 5 to a super critical EVA. Now, I gotta say, if I am thinking this, then some of you may be thinking this, but when I hear EVA, I kinda roll my eyes, like there's so much EVA out there, and it's getting to the point where it's kinda played, like it's got a bad reputation, that it's a bit of an energy suck, or at least not as responsive as some of the other, I don't know, let's say newer, more advanced foams out there. However, I'm happy to report that what Hoka has done with this super critical EVA is not the EVA that you're probably thinking of. This is surprisingly agile and responsive. And after running in this, and I ran in the Mark V last year, it seems pretty obvious to me why Hoka went with this foam. It does seem superior over that ProFly Plus. It's a really good foam. I think because of this foam, it's going to keep that great reputation that the Mark V made for the Mark series. What I'm saying is the Mark VI is an excellent shoe because of this foam. Coming down to the outsole. You see anything different here? I bet you do. On my colorway, all this orange is extra. We do have Durabrasion outsole rubber on the Mark 6. 
that is in stark contrast to last year's Mark V when we had a rubberized EVA. Now, I've got to tell you, this rubberized EVA, it feels good to run in. I like running in a rubberized EVA just because it feels so soft. When you put rubber on the outside of a shoe, it can give it a firmer feeling, or it's not always a firmer feeling, it's more of a slappy touchdown. But I did run in both shoes at the same time, so I got a good idea of how the shoes feel, one on each foot. And I've got to say that the Mark VI does feel slightly firmer than the Mark V, but I think that is due to this outsole rubber alone. When I really like thought about it while I was running in both shoes, I can say that the Mark VI does feel a little more responsive than the Mark V. But obviously with that rubberized EVA outsole, the Mark V feels a little softer at touchdown, but that softer touchdown isn't everything. And also I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a lot of wear on this Mark V. That is probably one of the biggest complaints that people made about the Mark V is that it just didn't stand up to a lot of punishment. You know what I'm saying? The Mark V wore down quickly. The Mark VI, on the other hand, with that durabrasion outsole rubber, makes the shoe resilient. The Mark VI is going to stand up to a lot of punishment, which makes that $140 price tag even more attractive. Now, if I look at the lateral heel edge of my Mark VI, I think at this point I've got about 40 miles in this shoe, and there is very little wear, my friends. Up on the forefoot, there is zero wear, but honestly, that's not surprising. Usually where I see the wear is on this lateral heel edge, and yeah, I can see a little bit, but the shoe has a lot of life left in it, and it's gonna last a long time. As far as the ride goes, guys, this has a good step-in feel. It's soft, but not too soft. It's very responsive. It has smooth transitions, and that's exactly what we want when it comes time to pick up the pace in a non-plated shoe. In fact, as I was running in it, I was actually thinking about how the Mark VI makes me question the entire daily trainer category. Because if you can make a daily trainer that is this light and feels this good, it makes me wonder why we'd want those bigger and far heavier daily trainers that a lot of brands put out. Still, I guess there's a place for everything, but what I'm saying is the Mark VI works quite well. So after I was thinking about how this kind of puts the daily trainer category to shame because it's so much lighter, it's going to be resilient with this outsole rubber now, and it's made for picking up the pace, it also made me think about picking up the pace. Now I did do several runs where I got up to tempo pace, but if I'm totally honest, when I actually go out for a tempo run, at this point I am usually grabbing a plated shoe. So I guess this is a good place for you to add in the comment. When you go out for your workouts, do you gravitate to a plated shoe, be that a race day shoe or a super trainer, or do you prefer a non-plated option? I've got to be honest, when I go out for my workouts, I think I am always going for a plated shoe at this point in my running life. So for me moving forward, the Hoka Mark VI is definitely something that is going to remain in my rotation and I'm going to put a lot of volume into the shoe. But I've got to be honest, if I'm going out for a fast run, one where I'm picking up the pace at all, so tempo intervals, I'm probably going to be going for something with a plate. Now for my longer runs, my easy runs, the kind of runs that I would use a daily trainer, Mark VI is going to be pretty ideal because at the end of those runs, I often like to add in a few strides and this shoe is light enough, nimble enough and responsive enough for me to pick up the pace and actually feel good when I am running fast during those strides. But I bet there are a few of you out there that likes to maintain that tradition of not running all your workouts in a plated shoe. Some may even say it's cheating. I am not one of those people, but I would like to know your thoughts. I'd like to know your thoughts on that whole plated shoes for workouts argument. And I'd like to know, have you ever run in any of the Mark series? And also if you're thinking about picking up a pair of the Mark VI for yourself. At $140, I'm gonna be straight up and say, it's money well spent. All right, that's it for now, guys. It's Matt V. This has been my review of the Hoka Mark VI. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.